Hi there, this is Oryx and I have a new Launchpad app for you. It's called Trigger X and it lets you control live's drum rig and one instrument at the same time. Let me show you. So first something about the drum rig. Um, Trigger X has four groups for the drum rig. And each group contains 20 pads so you can control up to 80 pads in total. So this is group A. Group B. Group C and Group D. Okay, now the cool thing is you can also link pads. So if I have this crash and I want it to sound together with, or maybe, yeah, maybe with this. I can just uh, select both groups and then the pads are linked. And that works of course for everything you do. So if I want that to sound together with that, it's just a matter of selecting the groups. Okay, right now they're linked, they're both on, so. Okay, so you already know each group has 20 pads. 16 pads have a repeat button and 4 pads have a hold button. The repeat buttons are these 4 buttons and it's group 1, group 2, group 3 and group 4 for the repeats. So repeat group 1 controls these 4 pads, repeat group 2 controls these 4 pads, so um, each button controls the 4 pads on the left of it. So you also notice the LED feedback um, that changes if you select it a repeat button. Okay, so that's really handy if you want to do fast uh, repeats for one sample. Now the hold buttons uh, are these four. Uh, if you have loops, for example, it can be very handy to let them repeat over and over. These are all loops, but you notice they stop playing as soon as I move my finger away. So if I select one of these, these are the hold buttons, so if I want to loop this button, I just uh, select hold on. Okay, and uh, right now it starts looping. So that's really handy if you want to repeat something over and over. Okay, that's it for drum rack, I guess. Right, now for the instrument you want to control, these pads all control the notes. You also can set them one octave higher or um, minus 24. So with these two buttons you can control the whole range. This button is uh, the arpeggiator. And this is a hold button for the arpeggiator. Okay, so that's it. This is the LED button. You have to press this one if you go back to session. So it activates the LED feedback for Trigger X. So next I'd like to show you how easy it is to implement Trigger X into your own live sets. I have already some stuff going on right now. Uh, it's really simple, just Rhodes piano, some percussion, Moog synths, and the other two clips in red are for my own recording. 
So what you gotta do is go to your projects, then select the trigger X, X project and you drag in the whole .als file into your own live set. Wait until you see the red line and then you can place trigger X wherever you want. Going to place it before the chords. And then you wait until trigger X has loaded. Okay, there it is. So next thing you gotta do is map a few macros, but it's really easy. I provided uh, this picture for you. It contains all the buttons you need to map. They are also color coded, so it's really easy to see which button needs to do what. Let me quickly map everything so you can follow what I did. First I go to user 1. Okay, then I press the MIDI mapping button. So first button is plus 12, map it to this one. Arp on the one next to it. Then uh, minus 24, just under minus 12. Arp hold under the arpeggiator on. Okay, and go to next track. Again plus 12, same button of course. Minus 24, also the same button. The purple let's on button is the button on your first row to the left. Okay. I'm going to this one. I start with repeat groups. So these are located here. Group one. Group two. Group three. And group four. Then the holds. These are located here. Hold 1, hold 2, hold 3, and hold 4. Okay, that should do it. These are the groups for the drum rack. Group A, group B, group C, and group D. There you go. Next track, again, hold. One, two, three, and four. Again, the repeats. One, two, three, and four. And the groups group A, group B, group C, and group D. Again, a let's on button. So I map it to the same one as before. Okay. Then again, let's on button. The override button, that's just uh, under the let's on button. So it's mapped. Okay, next you gotta also map the override in live uh, project. Okay, that's it. Um, everything is mapped right now. You just need to make sure uh, your drum rack receives from Tricks drums and the instrument you want to control receives from Tricks notes. I forgot one thing Tricks notes and Tricks drums both need to uh, be in record mode. So you activate these buttons. Otherwise, trigger X will not work. You can also select the monitor in. That's uh, then you can deactivate the record buttons. Uh, but obviously, you can't record when uh, you selected monitor in. So it's best to keep it on auto and record on.